Now that we have a site, let's add a database to store and retrieve information from. Now, as you saw earlier, Azure has a variety of data services to store a variety of types of data. When deciding the type of storage that you want to use, there are a few questions that you should answer. First, how complex is the data that you need to manage? How is it going to be queried? Does it have specific rules or requirements associated with it? Second, how much data is there? Is it measured in megabytes or gigabytes? And finally, is the data structured or unstructured? A better way to ask this is whether the data is textual in nature or binary in nature. These questions should look somewhat familiar if you've ever stored data for an app. We ask these same questions for desktop and web-based apps too. So let's match these up to the Azure data storage models. The first storage choice we have is the one that we tend to use the most often, SQL. Azure supports SQL Server in the cloud as a platform or any other database vendor as an infrastructure virtual machine. You're probably already familiar with all the features of this platform. SQL Server stores data in columns and rows, is a relational database. It supports complex queries, it works best with textual-based data, and it supports enterprise-level features like transactions and stored procedures. The second model we have is the table storage, or the NoSQL approach. And these are databases like MongoDB or DocumentDB, but stored in the cloud. These tend to be quite fast as long as you're retrieving from a specific key. This does not support direct relationships. All the relationships must be done by the client. The data is stored as JSON text elements, and when you query for a record, you always get the entire blob back. One big advantage of table storage is the price. It is significantly cheaper than the SQL option for large data sets. And then finally, we have blob storage. SQL and table storage are horrible at storing large binary files, things like images, videos, audio, etc. These blobs can be cached regionally, and they can have a unique URL associated with them for retrieval purposes. This allows you to combine this data storage approach with either, with either SQL or table storage and store pointer URLs to the data as part of your structured data. We're going to use a SQL database with our app today. It turns out that the mobile app service has some built-in support to expose tables from a SQL server with little to no custom code. And this makes it trivially easy to utilize the storage model. But keep in mind that if your data doesn't fit in the SQL model, or if you prefer to use another data storage technique, you have other choices. To use a SQL server, we have to add a database to our resources and then define a connection string in our mobile app service that points to that database. You can also use an existing database if you already have one defined. You can even create a secure tunnel to your data center and use your on-premise SQL server. There are several ways to add a database. You can use the new option, as you see here, and then pick data and storage and SQL database. The ASP.NET deployment model can also create the database for you as part of the service definition or the service creation. Alternatively, you can use the SQL databases option in the sidebar. This blade has an add button in the toolbar, which presents the exact same SQL database dialog you see here in one step. Notice that you have to enter several pieces of information to create a new database, very similar to our mobile app creation dialog. We need a unique database name, a billing subscription, a resource group, a server host, and a pricing tier. The database is just the first part. Then you need to provide access to that database in your app service. To use the built-in table support, the mobile app service expects a single database connection that's named ms underscore table connection string, as you can see here. This is true of both the Node.js and the ASP.NET backend. This is the default name that's defined in the web config. You can change this if you change the ASP.NET server code or the Node.js definition file. The connection string identifies the server and the SQL credentials used to access the server. One really great feature is that you can define the data connections as properties of a deployment slot. And that means that you can have your beta site using one database and the production site tied to a different database. Finally, another option for creating a database for your service when you're using an ASP.NET backend is to add it to the initial app creation step in Visual Studio. This is accessed through the Services tab of the Create App Service dialog. Click the plus button next to the SQL database. This will open a dialog to let you select or create a new database. And here you have the same inputs as the Azure portal. Once you enter all the required information and click OK, it will add the database and the connection string as resources for your app service. This database will be defined locally in your project and pushed to Azure the first time you publish. Thank you.